This is a great double blind quarter mile trail in a semi urban area. Uh, it's wonderful because you're going to see it's not all rosy. There's lots of little problems that I have with the dog uh, that I have to be able to work through, but yet still continue to read the dog and put the dog in places where there's productive sources of odor. This is a teamwork video where it's me and the dog working together and not the dog just following one specific trail. You're also going to see how difficult the dog's body language is to read in these conditions. The start point in this trail was designed to be difficult. It's a dog walking area with lots of poop and pee and other things all over the place. Um, we need to get this dog outside of her comfort zone uh, and make sure the starts aren't always picture perfect. And that's exactly what this one is. You're going to see a lot of little distractions, a lot of things that I have to try to work through and still uh, have her maintain some semblance of, of trailing. Uh, there are a couple times that I want to actually call this and it's going to be in the beginning of this trail. Distraction number one probably a little bit of dog poop or dog pee. She picks up the trail again, but you're gonna see her get distracted again. Everything changes, all the body language changes. Uh, she's detecting odor coming from this house and wants to check it out. More than likely, this is the source of the uh, dog poop odor that she's been sniffing here, uh, and then I've corrected her now twice for. She goes back to the trail, you can see right where she picks it up, and then starts following it actually very nicely have a good direction of travel, we're establishing a good line, and then watch. All of a sudden it changes one more time. Um, I think the problem here is a relatively dominant dog uh, that she's a little bit nervous about. She wants to see what it is, not necessarily for play purposes, you can tell by the tail set, um, but uh, it is making her a little bit concerned. That's why she's checking it out. Goes back to check out another dog distraction coming up. I'm actually thinking about canceling this trail here very soon. Now this correction coming up may seem a little bit harsh, but you have to understand that she's been corrected now three times already for doing the exact same thing. She needs to leave this and get back to work, either that or we're going to call this trail. Um, however, she goes right back to the trail and picks it up. Now mind you, this is a double blind trail. I have no idea where our trail layer is gone. Uh, he's got three possible different directions to take uh, right out of the gate, and uh, I didn't see where he left to. Uh, she seems to pick up his odor real well very happy right now with the body language that I'm seeing. I, I see some pretty good trailing behavior. Every now and then it gets a little bit mixed up, but I think this is primarily due to a lot of conflicting wind. It's hard to see it and hear it in the video, but uh, right around this area we're getting gusts of uh, anywhere from 20 to 25 miles an hour. Uh, it's pretty hardcore wind. You may have noticed that every now and then she's popping her head to the left. You see a real low tail set, no clear direction of travel. I don't think she's actually on the trail at this point. I think she's on the fringe, and now she detects it from a distance. Watch when she picks up the trail. You'll see it. Here it comes. And right here. Now we have it. She backtracks just a little bit and then establishes the direction of travel. This bush caught her attention. Probably this is a pea bush from another dog. Uh, we're working in an urban area that she's never worked in before, uh, and the dog distractions are a bit of a problem. Um, and more importantly, I think that the wind is a big issue here. Generally speaking, I don't recommend walking up on a distraction like that uh, and getting the dog off of it. I like to correct it from a distance. I didn't do it in this case because I thought it might be related to our subject for a second and I wanted to see if there was any uh, damage to the branch that was broken and something that he may have left behind. Uh, once I got up there, I pretty much assumed that it was a, a dog branch, something that the dog's been peeing on recently. Things are starting to change up again. She slows down, she speeds up, head goes up, head goes down, tail goes up, tail goes down. She looks to the left, she looks to the right. I'm not really confident in this at all. I don't think she's really an odor. I think she's just on a walk. I'm about ready to correct her and go back to where I think we had good odor. Um, but all of a sudden she seems to detect something. I think it's important when confronted with this situation, the handler really needs to try to stay as stationary as possible, reel that lead in and reel that lead out. 
Um, this is where a 30 foot lead definitely comes in handy. You can allow the dog some freedom to move and work without you having to move too much. Uh, this is important because I don't think you should follow the dog all the time when they're not showing you any clear trailing behavior, that they're just checking things out. And that's exactly what this dog's doing. Odor brought her down here, but I'm not exactly sure it's related to our subject. So now I'm going to bring her back to where, a place where I knew, or at least I think I knew I had some odor. Now while you're walking back to an area to cast your dog, it's important that you're always watching the dog for signs that they may pick up the trail. You never know, it might happen on your walk back. Um, always keep one eye on the dog and one eye on the direction that you're going because you might just pick up that trail when you're on your way back. As I'm walking back to where I knew we had the trail, I'm uh, constantly casting her out into areas of possible scent. The constant dipping in and out of driveways and entryways to houses are oftentimes an indication that the dog may not necessarily be on trail, but rather checking odor of the people that are in these, these houses. Uh, what I'm looking for is a big change in body language where I have a consistent direction of travel and the dog actually really doing something. Here, I think my dog's just checking odor in these particular driveways. Pay close attention to the tail set, um, how slow the dog is, how there is no consistent direction of travel, uh, the mouth is wide open, nothing's going on here. The dog didn't have good odor and it's quite obvious. It's right around this point that I think she's actually starting to pick up the odor again. Um, there's going to be some good body language indicators that I see, uh, more commitment to one particular direction of travel uh, and a consistent set of head and tail. You're going to see her pick it up actually pretty nicely right around here. Right here I point to a little proximity alert that occurs, a little fresh scent on the wind. Coming up we get the second proximity scent. She comes up on the hill, tosses her head up in the air, her body language changes showing that she's getting some fresh odor on the wind. She doesn't have a source of it, it's just some fresh odor that just came up. Everything changes for her now, speed, intensity, and playing of course too. Now the viewer may be having a difficult time seeing anything consistent at all with this trail and uh, that's part of the problem with working a trailing dog in an urban environment. There's not just one thing to follow, there's many things that you have to consider. Tail set, head set, intensity, direction of travel. All these things have to be calculated together to make determinations on where to go. Here's another proximity scent coming up right here. Head pops up a little bit, gets a quick air current, something fresh on the wind, and then she picks up the trail over here on the grass. Incredibly swirling wind conditions are a big component of the problems in this trail uh, from her moving left to right and not having any real consistent direction of travel sometimes, especially right here. Um, the wind is never in one particular direction. It's moving left, it's moving right, uh, the speed's increasing and decreasing, it's swirling. It's just absolutely crazy windy condition and she's reacting accordingly. And the big issue with this, I didn't know it quite at the time, but we're getting proximity scent. We're close to our subject, uh, plus we have the trail here. The proximity scent comes and then it goes away and then she has to pick the trail back up again. And this has happened at least three or four times now by the time we've gotten to this location. She's getting some air currents on high and right here she starts wiggling her tail a little bit. Uh, that's telling me she's got another proximity alert. I can't tell how close we are, but she's getting some fresh odor. Um, She's going back to the trail, working on air scent that's in the currents, uh, and then trying to find some sort of uh, direction in, either by trail or scent cone. I don't think she has a scent cone. I think she's working all on trail right here. Watch what happens as we start getting a little bit closer to the house. You're going to see everything change. All of a sudden, she's going to start wagging her tail, get very, very happy, and then charge in here. She's obviously got some really good odor. Something's in, in, in uh, works for her. Uh, she can't see what she's looking for, but she's in really, really good odor. Wagging her tail, very happy, picks up somebody's shoe here. I'm about to correct this. Um, I don't know why she's going after a shoe, and then all of a sudden I see our subject over here in the staircase. In hindsight, I think the shoe was just pure frustration on her part. She knew she was close, but she couldn't isolate the source of the odor. 